Hi, everybody. Over the chain, so this is No Frequency Radio. How's it going? I'm Dominic Wanzer, and I'm back at the show. Thank you, Bill, very much for uh, filling in for me. I've got Bill the business here as well. No problem. You know I enjoy it. Bill loved doing the show, loved. and I loved hearing it. I loved it. I'm just, I'm actually, in about three minutes, going to just storm out and scream I quit and start my own show. <laughs> Probably in the hour prior to this, because right. that'd, that'd be funny. Because <laughs> then I can run right into Dom's time. Yeah. Every week. I'm, God. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm cured from, uh, what was the last thing you gave me? Death? Death, I yeah. think it was death. <laughs> you're, you're back from death. You have successfully overcome one of the most terminal diseases. Ever, <laughs> so. Yeah. No. Came back from it. You can bottle that. You can go ahead and sell it. All right. I believe. I'm just going to reprise a little bit here. We're going to reprise. All right. I'm going to fade out here. That's two houses uh, from Chicago, Illinois. Some good friends of mine. Uh, they just played a show. Uh, actually, no. They just had a show cancel on Friday. So I'm sorry. They did not just play a show at the, a party. But they played the, the Double Door the other week in chicago illinois and they're getting some acclaim lately so uh here's a shout out to two houses hello all both of them uh corin i think is probably listening i should hope i, I should hope if i knew where my phone was i could right. confirm because she likes to tech advise from the, the right space uh brenna if you ever see this hello oh, indeed oh wow she, john Jesus. newman uh Newman's. all the newmans across space and time i think at least one or two of them is watching uh aaron stray uh what up Stray Dog Knights, Theron, Theron Frederick, uh, the Duke of New York, uh, Flynn McNamara, who's back in town, uh, with my cousin Avery, hello. Hello, child. Uh, Lisa Grassi in Las Vegas, Nevada, Bongo Billy. Oh, Bongo Billy. Um, who else am I missing here? It's been so long since I did this, this whole bit. Well, I think you got all your normals. I think I got all my normals. I'll go ahead and give a yeah, shout out here to, uh, to Core Hey Core. I'm sure you're listening. Actually, I know you're listening. You just confirmed for me. And, uh, oh, Amanda and Larry and oh. Jamie and Sean, who's holding down the fort, and Lucid and Ajari and Franklin and... Smokey M soon. M Smokey soon and Mia and... Fr Do you Mor Morrissey? I think his name Yeah, Morrissey. Morrissey and, uh... Mickey. 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 Oh. Mixta. I haven't met him yet. He's a treat. I bet. He makes a lot of fun noises. Aw. Yeah. Well, that's the best kind of cat. Yeah, you know, it is. It's not my cat. Other people's cats. <laughs> of other people's cats. Oh, and Jezebel and Mambo. Hey Jezebel guys. and Mambo. And possibly Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. How's it going? see you uh, Wednesday. I'll be there for dinner as well. Tell me how that goes. Oh, I'm going to. Yeah. Uh, everyone's going to hear about it. I went to this place in Chicago uh, called Johnny's Grill. Now, Johnny's Grill is this place... Right in Logan Square on Kedzie, right on the uh, kind of like the north end of Kedzie Boulevard, right by the Logan Square itself. And Logan Square itself is uh, there's a particular column with an eagle on it in a square park. Oh, all, right. all right, but there's also a neighborhood surrounding it for a couple miles around. It's called Logan Square as well. Okay, so this Johnny's Grill place is you know. I think it's the place next to it, so I mistakenly go in there because they look like the same place. A Cafe Lula is where I meant to go. All right. But it's, right. Cafe Lula is packed to the brim with people of uh, the young, like our age in the hip scene. The hip happenings. The hip happening scene. And I All think, right. oh, man. And there's, like, waits for tables. And I'm just like, I got to. I gotta see what that's. I don't go there. I go to Johnny's Grill, <laughs> so I go to Johnny's Grill, and uh, it's it's these like there are a couple Mexicans on the grill, and I think there's a couple old Greek men. I know like at least one of them is Greek, running the joint. <clears throat> of course, well, it's yeah. That's a Greek ethos. So right on the grill, that. yeah. Yeah. So it's this huge plate though, like this big on an oval sized plate. Yeah. A third of hash browns, a third of scrambled egg, and this big round piece of uh, chopped steak. All right. For about eight, for eight dollars. Okay. That's a, that's a great. Right I don't price. even finish it. It's so you know so filling. So plentiful. Right. So bounteous. Yeah. 
All right. Bountiful. 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 <laughs> um, I'm going to interrupt the show flow for just a moment. Oh, the here. disclaimer. Well, that and also, oh. uh, I don't know which hole I'm plugged into. Okay. If you can track it back to its plug. All right. The uh, volume knob on that, can you turn it down like a quarter? Uh, yeah, like that's probably good there. Okay. Because it was getting a little explosive in my ears. Okay. Sweet. That's why I like this new setup. I don't know what that is. You probably shouldn't touch that. I'm not going to touch that. I don't know. There's a thing over there. This is ominous thing. <laughs> it's got a single knob. Thing. <laughs> it is. Uh, this actually, this now I'm going to complain. Can you just just a shade back up? Okay. Because it's now I can't even hear me. Hey, right. And hey, then I'm going to keep on. Oh, yo. Ha, right there. Probably exactly right back where it was. Okay, it? yeah. Yeah, yes. all right. You can't win with this thing. It's only got the click settings, so. <laughs> ah, my loss. But okay, we're going to we're gonna step out on a limb here. We're going to read a disclaimer before okay. we go and, and say anything else that might get us sued. <clears throat> right. So uh, everyone prepare yourselves. Welcome to No Frequency. My name is William Bulk, The Business. Uh, I'm here with Dominic Wanzer, the producer of this show. The things you will hear over the next 50-ish minutes represent the views of No Frequency and the people making them. All opinions and quotations in no way represent River West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. And as always, any financial advice should be ignored wholeheartedly oh. <laughs> while giggling. So, be sure to giggle. Because that's how we roll. Yay. We were giggling the whole time on our way here. <laughs> About a couple things. They were pretty much hilarious. Right. LOL. Yeah, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's real life. So, what's, what's news? You're back. I'm back. You're back. I'm done with a semester of uh, a class of school. He was in school. I lied all the yeah. time. <laughs> that was the deal. Yeah. And it was a very... I, In order to make up this class and not have it count against my GPA, I had to take it this very semester. And it was only offered one night a week for four hours. And it was this night. Yeah, and it was this night. So During these hours. I said, Bill... Can you do me this favor? And I, like the champion that I am. <laughs> rose to the occasion. Rose to the occasion like an air bubble in an ocean. Pulled himself up by the bootstraps and... Uh, I don't wear boots. Oh. I got these sweet kicks. Yeah, they are. They're pretty yeah, sweet I just bought kicks. them yesterday. Really? You see these? Look at this. It's oh, a wow. new balance. I went to Shoe Carnival. I'm going to give a shout out to Shoe Carnival on the fly <laughs> here because holy crap. Man, that place is a carnival of shoes. I'm going to get Bill some skate shoes yet. That's and and get him really in the street styling. I'm not street at all. <laughs> <laughs> I am what happens to street when street gets old. Uh, you yeah. still got it. Uh, no, <laughs> not no, even pretending. I, yeah, 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 I appreciate the effort. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's yay on you, but yeah. Mm -mm. You're just refusing now. I've, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like that. I, I don't have a problem saying no to things. That's right. He we, doesn't. I'm. That's great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those rare people. Like, if you don't yeah. like my answer of no, that's a fault in you. Not a fault <laughs> in me, so. Good luck out there. Right. What do we have for current uh, deals? Man. Man. I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, I'm not... The election's over. There's the no more news. The election's over, yeah, right. I don't know. I was reading... Uh, I was on the Yahoo early today before my eye started revolting against my brain pan. <laughs> and uh, they released their top 10 search terms for 2012. Okay. That is a depressing state of affairs on the mindset of the average Yahoo user. Well, well why? No, number one was elections, which isn't a huge surprise. Okay. You know, that's okay. Right. It's understandable. So what is number two? Souffles? Uh, no, number two. <laughs> what the heck was number two? Was uh, Kim Kardashian, I believe. Oh, God. No lie. Uh, number three was Kristen Stewart. Who's that? Who's Chris? I don't even uh, know. She's Kristen the Stewart. girl from Twilight. Oh. Uh, number four. Okay. Yeah, I should have printed the article out, but uh, it was actually really very depressing. Basically, what it was was eight out of the ten were different celebrity women. Oh. 
and then one was elections and one was something related to elections it might have been ads election ads or election commercials or something it was ridiculous and those are their top 10 search terms wow the rain whoa that was their search term history for the year uh, so basically people were interested in who was president and who had the most luscious buttocks in hollywood ah well it, it comes as no surprise i don't think that uh actually it thing? came as a <laughs> it came as a big surprise to I'm, me i'm a little surprised by you know what and he's still not working with anybody yeah uh, let me you lay it on us because i i don't know did you hear the I, whole thing? I, I heard some of it over the weekend i was <laughs> trying to catch up because it's this is amazing it's it, one of those things that it, it's mind-numbing politics to me because it's it's just gonna be draw dropping politics once I once it reaches your ears. Here's what uh, now Boehner said as he was on the news the other day, he said, oh, I was just flabbergasted. You know, this is voice. Flabbergasted. <laughs> it's unbelievably flabbergasted. Well, you know why is because he said, Well, we wanna increase these tax rates. Yeah. And and the revenue. And not only are there no spending cuts, yeah. There's increases. Yeah. Now, that's ridiculous. Now, let me just explain to you, and, be, and because I know Bill gets this. Uh, if you if you have, if here's your, can, can the camera see this? I want to make a point we'll, here. We'll I want to try to make this point very right. clear. Okay, here's we, what I have. Uh, I'll okay. watch the camera. You watch okay. what you're doing. Now, here's, here's spending and taxes right now. Let's yeah. just say that we've got an equilibrium. Oh, yeah. And now you say you increase your taxes yeah. and your spending stays the same. Yeah. Then you've got now you do have this margin here yeah, there's that space. of something that could be positive. Yeah. But if you have your spending and then you ha if you have your taxes here, yeah. okay? Yeah. You want to raise there. them. And then you want to raise your spending too. Yeah. You're not really you're not you're getting not anything right. new. You're just covering your behind for new things that you're proposing yeah it's just it's just bookkeeping ladies and gentlemen and uh i don't know how it's so hard and how it's and how people are often misled and well you know and this is one of the things that I, i've he's learned still campaign obama what where, where yeah, is the working well, well he doesn't need to work right yeah yeah he's a celebrity they don't do anything all right, what do you got? Uh, well, You're when up. they when they talk about cutting spending, right? This is one. This is where I think people get fooled a lot. Is they come out on Monday and they say, "Well, we want to spend a trillion dollars." Arbitrary. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink these numbers to make it easier for everyone to wrap it. A hundred dollars. We're gonna spend a hundred dollars, right? Next year. That's our budget, right? And then someone comes up and says, "Yeah, but we're only gonna have seventy-five dollars," right? Mm -hmm. So what they do is they say, well, our budget then is $75. We just cut $25 in spending. Mm -hmm. That's not what they did. They just adjusted to the reality. To, to cut the spending, they would need to come in with a proposal lower than revenues, which I think we're all grown up enough now to realize will never happen. Uh, spending will always outstrip revenues uh, from this point going forward. We will never, <laughs> we will never find our way back uh, unless something... I use the word catastrophic, but not with a negative connotation, but something catastrophic would have to happen. You know, a fully uh, libertarian-leaning House, Senate, and presidency to really yeah. affect the change that we need to affect to, to balance our budget and bring it back. You know, I was listening. I was in Chicago today. You know. Yes. Early this morning. I'm aware. I'm in the car, in Jamal's car. In Jamal. And shout-outs to Jamal as well if you catch this. I, I'll may, I may just uh, forward this link to you so you can catch it. Jamal. Um, I, uh, I was listening to this. Can I call him a hack? Can, can I call I think I'm going to call him a hack. I was listening to this hack. <laughs> His name is Bill Press. Okay. All right. Do you know this guy? I don't. No, nobody knows. He's on... I start. <laughs> I'm listening to AM amplitude modulated radio here. You just love knowing that. <laughs> that is a thing you love. I'm listening to amplitude modulated radio. Not frequency modulated. No. no. And uh, I start off at the lowest oscillation. Yeah. As like down. the 700s. Yeah, yeah. Micro. And I'm, um, you know, I'm just kind of 
tuning up some some oscillations, and I get to 8.20 a.m. 8.20 And there's this Bill Press hack, and he's just like, uh, you know, uh, what, what, the, what was the language he used? He said, hey, we won. You lost. You know, get over it. Do these things. And you know what? You know who else won? Is the Republicans yeah. won all their seats yeah. back. And those seats, they aren't just holding those seats. They're not just a sofa that you can just lean over yeah. or just sit on and push whatever you want to do. You need to work with them yeah. in order to have anything. You'll get it through the Senate just fine with zero Republican votes. Yeah, which means you have to own it, too. Right. So a couple less Democratic votes right. you can expect on top of that. <laughs> But you're, there's just no way you're going to do the House. Oh, yeah. And blaming the the Republicans for not working with you in, is ridiculous because in order for a compromise to exist, the definition of compromise is both sides give something up. Yes. And if one side pushes its agenda and the other side doesn't like it, well, then you compromise with that other side yeah. so that they can agree it's to make it into a law. Yeah. That's what a negotiation is. Yeah. That's a compromise in its truest form. A compromise doesn't mean that one party compromises all of its core values and <laughs> beliefs yeah. for you to push your agenda through. We're not compromising things to right. agree with you. We're, exactly. we're trying to come to a compromise. Exactly. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And I think, and and to bring it for, for our, our listeners, our dear, dear readers, uh, the, the issue comes up when... And and now more than even last false budget cycle, the Republicans are more willing to, to compromise towards right. the Democratic agenda. Exactly. But every time they give an inch, the Democrats are demanding the mile and a half right. of their dream world where money doesn't matter and everybody gets everything for free. Right. And, you know, it's, it's a... The state controls the means of production. Yeah. You <laughs> oh, know, man. from... Each according to their ability to each according to whatever we decide is their need. Right. And that's not not a fair way to run yeah. a, a solid it's Certainly not a free way to run anything. No, this is not free in the least. Not in any sense of the word free. So, so that's – and that's really the state that we're pushing towards right now. And that's really a big deal because – and uh, – you know, it, it's great because when you go to like a uh, real clear politics, or, or I've been skipping Drudge lately because he's just going down this rabbit hole. I don't understand where it's just. Any, <laughs> I, that's why I've never read Drudge. It's because well, he tends to go down rabbit holes. Well, suddenly there's all this <laughs> sordid news on there, and no actual. You know, it's all about Hamas suicides and K Kansas City suicides and little kids being fined for using the bath. It's just ridiculous. Huh. I don't know what he's been drinking or something again, but uh, yeah, Newman knows what I'm talking about. So, but like real clear, you go there and literally, ev literally every other article is the Republican secret thing, the Democrat secret thing, the Republican secret thing, the Democrat. Yeah. So apparently they all have secret things that journalists know about. But, <laughs> but within their own party. Yeah, with, sitting within party. the halls, they yeah. have no idea what's happening. They're, they're in complete confusion and disarray in yeah. the halls of Congress. It's, I'm wondering, which party really does have the rook, you know? Which, which one does have that checkmate bishop backing up the queen, you know? You know, it depends on the situation. Because I think in, in, in uh, sitting in the the hall what is that the chamber chambers uh chamber are you thinking the house of representatives yeah the house yeah what is it? oh well, the is chamber it, of congress i think it might be called congress? whatever the big room that they always show i know on, yeah on -SPAN, yeah uh, the one, one where nixon took yeah. the oath yeah, not no took one, the oath but uh no one's ever sitting there because they're all on vacation that place, right uh, <laughs> with all the wood i can see it yeah we right all, we all can see it it's a classic image but uh you know when you're sitting there if they're debating with one another I do think it's really very on even footing as far as ideology goes. Uh, it really just depends on who you agree with. Mm. But if they were to go point to point, I think if Boehner and Obama were to sit down and go at it, and again, Obama really has very little to do with the process. Uh, as much as he pushes for things, all he's doing is pushing. He can't offer. Yeah. So He signs things. Yeah, he's right. the ultimate arbiter of legality. But beyond that, he's just a figurehead for a movement that died 50 years ago. So, uh, I think that in that instance, the Republicans would have the upper hand. Because they, they, they come out, uh, Pelosi, Reed, and Obama. 
saying the Republicans never offer anything. Well, okay, in the last four years, the only people to offer a budget have been Republicans. You just don't like it. But you've never countered with anything serious. You, you right. your, your own budget was voted down with 97 out of 100 votes and three abstinations. Like, that, that was a serious proposal? You walked in with that and said, this is good, solid work, and then got zero? That's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't understand, like... Paul Ryan, he, he had a thing with the title, a PowerPoint. Yeah, Path to Prosperity. You know, there was, whether you like the ideas or not, you were presented with an actual true idea that did have projections and statements and right. and, and facts to support it. And the thing is, uh, take it easy, John. Okay. Okay. And the thing is that, uh, and this is a great fact because I've looked this up actually. There's a, the, the report by. Done by the Congressional Budget Office, which yes. is a nonpartisan organization, the CBO, for the record. Uh, I looked at the report and comparing the numbers, uh, Paul Ryan's plan to Obama's plan. There's clearly more spending under Obama's plan, and there's no, there's just an increase in deficits and debts. And Paul Ryan ran on that, and he made that point. And I said, okay, you know, that's a fair reference point. If you're gonna reference that, yeah. I looked it up. It's true. That's what the actual Congressional Budget Office's report says. Plan yeah. compared to plan. Yeah. Well, then, there you, like, to right. me, the, there you have it. Like, there you there, have there's it. There's an answer, Proof. and, and it's, it's black and white on paper. giving it party weight if they were to just put yeah. it out there with here's our projected goal right. here's our plan to get there and then just send it out and let people just look at it and decide right uh, control groups yeah. yeah you know yeah. And see see which one actually holds water and yeah be surprised at how far oh my god here's an it's a little cosmo there. dog yeah yeah that wasn't real cosmo was that's not wasn't a real cosmo yeah, that dog <laughs> way too thin and not wearing a coat <laughs> There's a dog that comes into our gas station. He wears a coat. His name is Cosmo. His name is Cosmo. He's a little, uh, what, what the heck? He's a Boston Terrier. He's a Boston Terrier. He's a cosmonaut. A guy named Brendan brings him in. He's a cool enough dude, Brendan. He is. His other dog, though, is better. Oh, uh, Sully. Sully. An old man, Sully. Yeah. Old man, Sully. It's an old man's name. And he's an old man's dog. <laughs> Brendan will never talk to us about politics. We won't talk to him about politics either. I wouldn't. <laughs> I like the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the guy. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. Ah. That was painful. All right. What so. else? Mm. 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 Current mm. things. Current things. Well, Kansas City had a suicide. Okay. The yeah, you're talking. Football you're team. Oh, the football team? Yeah, the football suicide. You didn't hear about that at all. Yeah. all no. Right. <laughs> well, then we'll skip it because it's just tragic for the sake of tragedy so really yeah was it just a guy he's a, he's a star it's actually really weird he's uh he he's went to the star. same high school as me west babylon really yeah Ooh. And, uh, he made it onto the uh kc what is it the kansas city chiefs wow the ones with the arrowheads and right the KC. yeah the kansas city yeah. chiefs he uh he's 25 years old he's a uh, big black guy's probably a defensive lineman mm or offense linebacker, or I think. Some linebacker, that might right. be it. Okay. But uh, I guess he uh, doesn't have a history of concussive injuries like most football players. He's he's been able to get out of football as much as he could without a bad injury to his head. Ah. Uh, but recently suffered a horrifying head injury that he was still recovering from. Wow. So uh, he just. And well, he's self-medicating then with painkillers and alcohol. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He was married, had a three-month-old, three-year-old rather child. Uh, constantly arguing with his wife, according to friends and family. Like right. That was, that was their thing, was always to... They were passionate that way. Passionate. That is what they call it, huh? Yeah, that's the word they're using. But uh, he finally, I guess, snapped, shot his wife eight times, oh. and then drove down to the training facility for the Kansas City Chiefs with a different gun, went in, apologized to the two coaches that were there, and then shot himself to death. Right there. Right there. In the uh, 
my the training God. facility. Yeah. He uh, he pulled a Bud Dwyer. He, yeah. Right there. He pulled a pulled a dumb move is what he pulled. And then yeah. of course you know the fallout from this. Uh, Bob Costas had this whole rant. Who's Bob? Uh, is he the coach? Bob Costas. Uh, Bob Costas, the NBC football announcer. Okay. Bob Costas, that guy. You'd probably know him if you saw. I probably know him. I watch only as much football as my state permits me to watch. <laughs> <laughs> well played. So, but, uh, you know. He, he made some good points and some bad points in his little rant today where uh, he was talking about gun control on the one hand, uh, which, of course, means hitting your target, and uh, the idea that people are going around now saying, and, oh, this reminds me or... or puts me in mind of of tragedy like how how small we all are right because no matter who you are these events right will will strike and he said he's like if you need a tragedy every six months to remember how tragic things are that you're wrong you're just stupid is basically what he's saying and he's right you don't you shouldn't have to have a tragedy to remember how tragic it feels yeah uh, but it seems to be that when tragedy strikes everybody suddenly remembers how tragic things can get uh, and he was saying, and he, he's absolutely wrong. Uh, what he was saying is that if, uh, the, I wish I could remember the gentleman's name who killed himself. Might have been Javon, Javon Butler, perhaps. Don't quote me on that. Look but, that uh, up. Look that up for me. But, uh, if he hadn't have owned guns, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, no, he would have found another way. Th that's the thing. you know. I, I'd like to point out that every year 200,000 people die from medical mistakes. And only 30,000 are shot. So uh, maybe he would have sent his wife in for surgery and just played the odds. Javon Belcher. Belcher. That's what it is, Javon Belcher. Yeah, but he's from West Babylon. Uh, his uh, child is actually in care of his mother now back in Babylon, West Babylon. Huh. So. Hometown. <laughs> You're what, what, he's what? not from Babylon. West Babylon. You're not from West Babylon. No, I went to high school in West Babylon. Okay, but you're not from there. Well, I'm as from there as you can be. Okay. Is there... Yeah. That's where all my friends are. That's where Rob's from. Really? Like, everybody's from oh. West Babylon. That's where I went to high school. Were you born in West Babylon? No, I was born in Glen Cove. Okay. Mm. Raised in Oyster Bay, educated in West Babylon. Didn't you have a na guy named Mr. Ross? He was your inspiration for management. Mr. Moskovitz. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Moskovitz. <laughs> Bob Ross. <laughs> Bob Ross is a painter who paints happy little trees. Yeah, he's dead now. Well, most people. Okay. To be completely honest. In fact, so much so that the movie American Tale, which involved mice immigrating to America, Fievel, you, you were so young. But uh, <laughs> at the time when I was your age, when we were both four, uh, this movie came out called An American Tale, which was about immigration from Europe to America, and the family were actually the Mouskovitzes. Oh, wow. Yeah, how weird is that? That is really weird. That's how... <laughs> that's that name is that much that ubiquitous yeah that's the one right there is, yes so. how are you at a loss for words because i'm so tired <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Good job. C center street tonight is every three seconds two seconds away from having a massive car accident but yeah i don't know what it is i want to see one and they keep just getting out of it oh well you know people yeah. it's amazing to see the i was talking to bill about this earlier the disparities in driving from here 
and in Chicago. Oh, it's yeah. just a world of difference in I don't know if it's people that are conscious of that's not what you're supposed to do <laughs> in Wisconsin. <laughs> here or, or there. No here. <laughs> need to be right here making this turn in front of you and this other guy yeah, while no he tries to think. make this turn from the other side into the same lane yeah oh yeah no it's right. a, every left is 40 feet worth of work to get <laughs> whereas here it's everyone is oh after you after, after i you. slowly try and then after you after i slowly try <laughs> Or that there are other cars out there. Because they'll all do that, that three inch, like. <laughs> line hump yeah and then they all right. panic and then they all wave at one another it's, right yeah it, stop it just someone grow a set and go <laughs> this is it's war out here it's yeah ha- this is hamburger hill all right let's, what it- <laughs> let's let's kill everybody okay what <laughs> <laughs> i think i lost my train of thought halfway through that statement but yeah uh, oh man yeah she's gonna come in here and ask for money from everybody in the store no she? she's not uh, she did last week did she yeah wow well, she learned. Uh, well, that's because the shelters only take pregnant women or single men. Oh, is that how it works? Apparently. That the most unlikely set of people I would ever accept in my shelter. <laughs> As we all know, pregnant women are gross. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Cor. You're not gross. Oh, my God. I just, I'm going to say it to your face, too, on Wednesday. Don't worry about it. <laughs> And oh yeah, we're both watching my phone to see it light up. Uh, yeah, it's gonna uh, be. Uh, I'm now disinvited. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to go hang out in Chicago by myself. Uh, you can hang out with Ryan. I'll give Ryan. A call. Yeah, give Ryan or Dave. Dave Satterwhite. Dave Satterwhite. Pat Radke. You can hang out with him. Radke. Or Mike Boren. Pat Radke. Mick right, Boschman. Bosch. Mick Boschman might be busy in. That's unacceptable. In work. What if, what if Bill came to town? There's no busy when Bill's around. I am. Uh. Yeah. See, nothing to even say about that. I don't know. He might want to drink bourbon with you. He's an old Southern boy. Oh, there it is. This is gonna be. Yeah. I'm hoping it's going to be an LOL. You know what I should do is I should rent out my room and bed <laughs> as a motel. She made a little pile of poop. Oh. Just like you would expect a pregnant woman to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm on fire tonight. Now my head doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> Bill, Bill's head was uh, God, giving him heck. My neck all I morning, was wondering, oh, morning. Bill's not going to be able to do the show. It's going to be hell. No, and I, I made it. Yeah, something miraculous always happens right before the show. I think it's all that sugar. I really do. Yeah, no, it, had to be. it tasted exactly right, so it must have been what my body was needing. Yeah. So I must have just low blood sugar or something. Bill's head now clear. Bill's clear. body. Clear body is I had got some, an equilibrium uh, going. Cortisone shots last week. Oh yeah, for the shoulder. For my shoulder, and that guy's having a time. Oh. And it was yeah. amazing. Uh, it sucked most of the end he of last week. He is coming right. Oh, maybe he'll ask right. us for money. In, in the lobby way. Oh, yeah. Oh, those hipster kids are so scared by him. They don't know what to do. They it's don't. Their first time out of their parents' house on their own. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. They're so well-dressed. They're too well-dressed for this neighborhood. Maybe. That's ridiculous. No, yeah, they look maybe. nice. No, I saw them walk by. You saw them? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You had yeah, to have yeah, seen them. They were going that way. <laughs> but yeah, no, but uh, this is these cortisone shots. Yeah. Man, first off, <laughs> getting the shot, the very first one, 
because it's in my shoulder. So the point where the clavicle touches with everything else, and there's that little nugget of of, of like right of the cartilage, right basically like the point of your shoulder. Okay. Like the point that you know if you touch it, you can feel like the right. Angle. Yeah. So the place that he needed to uh, inject was actually about a half inch below that, which means uh. he has to go through that. And the guy says to me, he's like, this first one's going to hurt a little bit. Now, and I'm thinking, because they both, him and the nurse were both kind of calm about it. They're like, you know, they're like, oh, it's going to hurt a little bit. I'm thinking it's going to hurt a little bit. Like, you know, stingy. It's going to sting. I'm going to have some stingy. <laughs> yeah, I can have a little boo boo. Yeah, it's all a little oh, I'm little, just going to feel a little weak. A little, little pain. Hey, you know, yeah, yeah, all. yeah. Okay, yeah. So three minutes later, I came out of the blinding rage <laughs> <laughs> that that produced in my brain. Like, I completely blacked out. No idea what was going on. Like, screaming things that I won't, I'm not even allowed to say on the air. Not allowed to say on the air here. And, uh, and I apologized because everything I said came completely unbidden. The pain was that bad. I just kind of into a mm. into a hole of just vitriolic, horrifying things that I could say, combining words that were never meant to be combined. <laughs> Those are great. They that are. That happens now. Dude, you know that part in Ghostbusters 2 where the whole museum is covered in the pink goo? It was like that, but with words. Just not. Yeah. So then the other two shots were like nothing after that, and now all three are done. And it was oh. sore for days, but now it's. I mean, Dom watched me before. I lift my arm. He's right mobile. Above my head. Like it's directly great. above my head. Feeling. I could okay. high five somebody with my left hand now. Yeah. So. That's great. Got a call tomorrow. Set up my uh, string of physical therapies to see if we can maneuver my nerves back where they belong. Then I can go back to griping about my neck and back. Yeah. And then trying to figure out how to talk to the doctor into cortisoning me in my neck and back. Because. Yeah. yeah. Man. Feels good. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. I've kind of like just a couple months of laying in my bed without crying. <laughs> time. So That's great. Good for me. Good for them. Good for America. I, I referenced Bill being at a loss for words earlier, and I think we should bring this up. Yeah. Because this is an interesting thing about Bill. Bill is a master Scrabble player. Master. And that's not, that's not me just saying that. That's a proven fact. That's a proven fact. Bill can play Scrabble. I can play some Scrabble. I don't think he's ever true with the world or the country doing it. No. But he'd love to. I think you can probably give it a good go if you want to. I could to. probably do pretty all right. Yeah. I don't know that I'd be in the top 10, but I'd be in the top 40 for sure. Yeah. yeah pretty easily. Bill's got a great uh, knack for Scrabble. So when he's like, you know, when I say ubiquitous, why didn't Bill think of ubiquitous as well? Why didn't Bill think of that word? Why didn't I? <laughs> like, I'm embarrassed for myself now. <laughs> it's all right. Because <laughs> that's a word I use a lot, too. Like, right. That's one of my favorite words. Yeah. Ubiquity. Ubiquity. You know why? Because it's one of those words that's very complicated when you're a young child. Like, you're looking at it. Ubiquitous is a hard word to say. It's a great word to read. It's a phenomenal word. It's a very pretty word. It's bellatristic. Is actually the word you would use to describe words which are pretty. I don't even know that word. Now you know. I don't even know that word. Now here you are, learning bellatrism, the art of making words pretty. Wow. So when I was younger. That's amazing. At home. Yeah. My family. Yes. The neighbors up the road. Uh, I won't say their name because uh, they're not the type. Okay. But uh, Got it. they had this book because mm. the mother was obsessed with pigs. Uh -huh. Like adorable farm pigs that have been personified okay and she had this book actually called the ubiquitous pig which was just a, like a picture book of pigs in really <laughs> strange places okay <laughs> where the pigs were just everywhere and you're on their little you know their art pigs they're like craft uh like craftsman style pigs like little wood things okay and these people are just taking pictures of them at the grand canyon and the statue you know it was one of these adorable little books but uh that was i, I remember specifically that was the first time i had come across the word ubiquitous uh-huh and I read it out loud correctly the first time in front of my mother. And wow. she, she was amazed that I had actually read the word. It's correctly. Correctly. But I had no idea what it meant. So I asked, and then she explained to me ubiquitous means pretty much everywhere. Uh huh. And then I, it's ever since. Ever since? I remember that word. I remember that moment. Wow. I actually remember that it was Christmas. Really? Yeah. Ubiquitous. It was actually probably almost 30 years ago today, practically. Awesome. Give or take. Yes. I'm excited. That word has been ubiquitous in my life. Weird. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go with the ubiquity. Yeah, no, I went to Chicago, and uh, we hammered out some riffs. I'm pretty excited about them. I, I, I think Dave is on deck. I think Smitty is... Smitty's on the fence, but I think he's mostly on deck. Mostly on deck. Which is exciting. They're hard for me to play. Which is what you wanted. Which is what I wanted. Yeah. Now, 
No, I've got just a theory about that, you know. Just stop. Yeah, you got your own personal when, uh, vendetta against your abilities. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. No, which is cool. I enjoy... Let me reference something here. Reference. There's a, there's a band. They're very well known in indie rock. They're called Mission of Burma. There's a, a documentary about them called Not a Photograph. If you watch it, there's a scene where the drummer Peter Prescott says, well, th- he was reading an interview with the Ramones in which the Ramones made like this pact with each other that they would never play anything that they couldn't play, like not even try to, you know, play music that, they almost that was hard for them yeah. to play okay. or outside of their range because they knew they'd never be able to play it and where the ethos of burma was like well the opposite of that you know let's yeah. try to play music that we can't play or like it's almost hard for you know hard for us to play as a unit yeah. and so the things i write are hard for me to play and that's intentional because if i'm listening to a song uh, an awesome band, one of my favorite bands, The Conformists. And if I'm listening to any of their songs, I can tell that uh, it was difficult for them as a whole band to come together and not only write that, but practice that consistently, release that. Yeah. And as a listener, you're like, wow, somebody really took time to care about something that much to produce it. Yeah. When When... When something's hard for somebody else to do, you appreciate it that much more, I think, when the end product comes out. Like, wow, these guys really took that time. Like they worked on it. Yeah. Right, they worked on it, came together. and like, That's why I love listening to difficult music, because it's challenging. A lot of people listen to music because it's this familiar thing that, like, oh, I've heard that. and yeah, Everything is just canon and deep. Right, yeah. Now, when musicians make music for the sake of it being not familiar and, like, try to shy away from things that are really familiar yeah. ideas. Like Captain Beefheart. Right. Like yeah. Captain Beefheart or Shellac or The Conformists. Yeah. Like, you could tell, like, th- that, that music exists for people to learn from. Because if you don't challenge yourself, you can't learn. This is true. So th- that's why I love music that's difficult. And that's why I, I want to make music that's difficult. Because I want, I learn as much from myself playing as other people could learn from me playing. As I listen, you know, as much as I listen to other people and learn from them playing. Yeah. It's it's a, a great process. Yeah, absolutely. So. I respect. It's that. my rant about and that's, difficult music. And, and then I I wonder if that isn't getting lost now, as well the uh, that 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 ethical stance on music where. Uh, you need to push yourself. Right. Because, like, I, I, and I'm not diminishing this, uh, just as an example. I could go home and, with the credit card, download a copy of GarageBand uh, to my computer. Right. And I can have 48 bars to play with and make. You right. Know, and I have 6,000 <coughs> sounds to choose from and beat patterns already set up, and I can, you know, yeah. playing. And I can make music that sounds orchestral, you know, that is huge. Right. Very full sounding thing. But it's just me chain smoking cigarettes and poking my cat. <laughs> you know, and, yeah, and and people like me, and I'm going to use myself as an example. Uh, I have trouble with music because I don't hear the complexities of it. For, right. For for whatever reason, whether my ears are just not tuned to it or whatever. Right. So I wouldn't necessarily recognize that the work you put into it and the work that the me that was sitting in GarageBand put into it. Right. Are so different. You know, and that's I think that's how Skrillex got his job. Like I, it, <laughs> it sounds really hard, but it's really not. Like he does generally just hit play on a MacBook, and that's right. You know, it's his music. You know, yeah. Like Kid Rock actually knows how to play seventeen instruments. You know. Really? Flavor Flav knows how to play forty. Re- so, no way. Yeah. Forty instruments. Yeah. Absolutely, he was a child prodigy. Ha. Huh. I know. I just learned that the other day. Myself. I saw him play piano actually on video. Did was it the classical where he was? I think he's in he's in like all blues. white. Yeah, but yeah. he's like kind of crazy still. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's a uh, huh. He's been playing piano since he was I, mean, I want to say the articles said he was 6. Huh. But uh yeah, he can play basically every instrument known to man. That's amazing. Uh, Chuck D has actually come out and said that uh NWA. Yeah. And, and all those bands. Yeah. Anyone that Flavor Flav is a part of, he said she straight up they're public enemy. Public enemy. Uh, right. Everyone that he helped though. Okay. Like, he, Chuck D said that uh, if Flav hadn't been there, none of those bands would have cr- that music. Really? He wrote all of it. Wow. He rhymed all of it. It was all Flav. Flav? Yeah. And wow. now look at him. 
Yeah, now he's... Now he's just the guy that. hanging on the urinal at the Lake Bluff Station. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll let our... Uh, yeah, you'll have to come down and yeah, check that out. Yeah, let's come down and check that out. Yeah. If you're a man. <laughs> if you're not a man, just ask. We'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, the can beauty. I see you Flav or Flav? I want to see Flav. Uh, well, actually, well, you'll be disappointed because Flav's not up anymore. Oh, what do we have now? Uh, you'll have to come in oh. and find out. Yeah, I know. It's, That's uh, all right. I work there. So. Yeah, you'll probably see it. That's Tonight? Most likely. Maybe. <laughs> Inevitably. Yeah. Nah. Well... The river. Yeah, I, I don't think it's too lost on uh, indie music. I think that that ethos still exists in indie music. Yeah, well, you know, and again, a, lo- a lot of that I think it, it's not just the the people who put the music together. It's the listener that makes it right. The demand. Yeah, that's the the, the closing of the circle. Yeah. You know, the, the Mobius strip comes together at the tape that is the listener. Whoa. That's a metaphor. Dude. Yeah. Nah, nah. That's a meta five. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. That's really good, yeah. 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 So, you know, whatever people do. But like I said, most people have this familiar thing going. But there, yeah. are, there are musicians that... Or there are people, there are listeners that tend to be musicians more often than not. They're like, I want to just listen yeah. to something that nobody listens to. Because nobody listens to it. Because it's hard to listen to. Yeah. You know? It's not like experimental that. jazz. There's like six guys who actually like it. And then a bunch of people yeah. who listen to it to get an idea. Yeah. 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 Right. The Peter Woods Ensemble. I have still not seen them yet. I am neither one of those people. <laughs> I mean, I, it's fine that it exists. I would like it to exist where I am not. <laughs> Peter Woods? No, the Experimental Jazz. Oh, the Experimental Jazz. Yeah, oh. Just basically across the board. Okay. Not even gonna, not no? Gonna, not even couch Not even going to entertain bit. the yeah. idea? Oh, nope. man. No, I've entertained the idea. i got to listen to it every day at work. Or every, <laughs> uh, every Thursday at work. Why? Oh, is it on the WMSE? MSE in the mornings, yeah. You wake up and there's experimental jazz with birds chirping and saxophones playing one note for four straight minutes. Yeah. Or tremolo or whatever it is. Right? Trill. Trill is in there. Which is kind of like a tremolo. I don't know. What the, I just grabbed a T word and threw it out there. Tremolo is like an effect. Trill is like a technique that... Uh, Tremolo em- emulates. Wow, they just hit the heck out of that car. Yeah. Come on, I wasn't looking. Whoa, car crash. Dude. Oh. Dumbass. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, they messed that car up pretty good. No, actually, the car actually had the hood buckle like that. Oh, already. did it already? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. That was awesome. Did Dude. They, did they hit my car? No. Okay. <laughs> Bill's car was right in front of this. Right in oh, front. Oh, man. Man. Oh, seconds away. Okay. Well, we're ending the show now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to end the show and get my car out of this neighborhood. Yeah, and I'm going <laughs> to fade out with some... Uh, fade us out. Some Chopin. But uh, I'm going to say thank you again for listening. We enjoy having you. <laughs>